Hey, what's up guys? Chad here with the Reptile Rangers. Now we're at the Kernersville Reptile Zoo and Medical Center again today. And now that we're coming up on baby season, egg, egg hatching season, it's, it's kind of been in the full swing, but starting to get into kind of the full swing of things with uh, baby season, we're going to talk about sexing certain baby snakes. Primarily today is going to be the baby boa. You can add quite a few of these into this category and I'll talk about those. I like individualizing them too, uh, just bringing in different snakes and actually showing how to do that. But before we get into that, right in that bottom corner right there is our subscriber button. Make sure you hit that and for those that already have, we appreciate you doing so and following along week after week after week. Now let's get right into this. Okay guys, so I have this female boa here. I already know that because I've already sexed her quite a while ago. I don't have any baby male boas at the moment. So I'm going to show you a male on a ball python. But since I did say this was going to be more about the boas, then I'm going to talk about the couple of different ways real quick that you can do the sexing. Uh, but this one is all about the popping it, which is about the easiest and technically speaking safest that you can do when they're this size. All right, so one thing you can do is you can candle them. Okay, so underneath here we have the belly. These are the ventral scales. These below the cloaca or the vent are the subcaudal scales, okay? Now, if we was to take a flashlight and put it either to the side or underneath, if it's clear enough and you can see well enough with a bright enough flashlight, you can shine the flashlight just below the vent down in the tail because the hemipenes or the reproductive organs of the snake is going to be below in the subcaudal scales, okay? The hemipenes are going to go down into the base of the tail. Now, another way you can do this is by probing. Obviously, with something this small, it's going to take a very, very small uh, probe, and we call them blunt objects, but even at that size, it's not going to be very blunt. It's still going to be fairly sharp because of how small it is. What you would do is just take and stick the probe into the base of the tail and see how far down in the probe goes. Generally speaking, less than three scales is a female because there will be a wall there. There's no reason to have depth because the there's no hemipene, so it doesn't have to store those down. And five or more scales, okay, five or more subcaudal scales would be a male. But again, the dangerous point to probing would be, of course, busting through the wall of the female or damaging the hemipenes of the snake. So what I'm going to show you here is called popping. So if we take just above the vent on the ventral scales and we just kind of press gently, making a wall, we'll take and start way down the base of the tail and gently press and push at the same time. And you see I'm pressing and pushing and absolutely nothing comes out but <laughs> crap. <laughs> so you see the two little black nubs there. You can see those. That is not... A male. This is a female because absolutely nothing come out. Now I have this beautiful little bumblebee male ball python, okay? And we're going to do the same exact thing, okay? You can see his vent a little bit more clearly. I'm going to press just above the vent. I'm going to bend that tail slightly backwards, start way down the base of the tail, and whoop, there we go. Look at that. So that is how to sex or identify the gender of the boa and also the ball python. You can do the same method with Burmese python babies, with reticulated pythons. Now, it's not as easy to do with, with a lot of your colubrid species because their subcaudal scales are quite a bit tougher and stiffer, so it's harder to be able to do that pushing adequately without damaging the snake. So again, you may have to go to a probing. You may have to do what's called palpating. So if I was to take and just kind of roll my fingers down, I can barely feel those hemipenes inside of there. And it's not pressing hard. You're just rolling it and kind of feeling if there's something there. There's either flat all the way down or there's a slight bulge and then it drops. Okay, that would be the same thing. But however, like I said, this is going to be dealing primarily with boa constrictors. But since I didn't have a baby boa male, um, I went ahead and grabbed this bumblebee male. All right. So again, we're just going to take and just gently press. See how I'm just gently pressing right there. And then pushing right there. And then there's the hemipenes. Just that simple. And that's a quick, easy way of gender identifying your baby snake. 
That way when it's ready for sale, you know exactly what the sex is. Okay guys, hope that you've enjoyed that. Hope that was helpful. And especially for those of you that's either new into breeding or wanting to get into breeding and wanting to know how to very easily deal with babies, that's the easiest way. There's several ways that you can do that, but doing the popping is one of the best and probably easiest ways to do your sexing. Candling is a great way, not always accurate depending on how things go. Probing can be awfully dangerous because of how small the probe has to be, so you can damage the inside of the snake. Popping can be dangerous as well if you don't do it correctly. Yes, you can match the hemipenes, you can damage the reproductive organs there, but generally speaking, if done the right way, it's about the safest way to do that, and it's the easiest thing to do when it comes to baby boa constrictors. All right, now again, this is Chad. We are the Reptile Rangers here at the Carnival Reptiles Medical Center. We appreciate you following along week after week after week. Make sure to hit the subscribe button, like button, and the bell for notification. Make sure to write us in and let us know if other things you want us to film about. Our information will be in the description below for those needing to get in touch with us. People do it all the time for all kinds of questions, medical questions, help with habitat, feedings, whatever the case may be. Make sure to check out our TikTok channel and also entitled Reptile Rangers, our Instagram page and uh, Carnivore Reptile Zoo. And we uh, do have the storefront, so we do have pets for sale, including these baby boas here all the time and supplies and food and everything else. So again, we appreciate you coming along and following along with us week after week after week. We'll see you here at the zoo. We'll see you on the next episode. Later.